stab proof vests aren't but of course it's not that simple all right man take a seat look look we're nearly we'd start with the uh, orientation of the car here but we got calls pending and we got to get to them so we're rolling we're gonna have to learn on the way all right today I so I've received a lot of requests lately uh, to talk about body armor. While there's a lot of information out there about body armor that's designed to protect you from firearm threats, there isn't a whole lot explaining the different threat levels and what they're capable of for stab vests. And there's a whole lot of people in the United States that rely on stab vests for their safety and there's all, even more of them throughout the world that rely on stab vests for their safety. So I'd like to point out right from the onset that I'm not a correctional officer, nor do I play one on TV, nor am I an expert on stab armor. However, I do know a little bit about it, and I'd be happy to share what I know with you. If you happen to know more, or you have source material that I don't have access to, or you have personal experience with stab protective armor, let's say you've been stabbed with armor, or if you've seen somebody been stabbed when they're wearing the armor, and you want to add your commentary, add it down in the comments below. We're always happy to learn more here. So the way stab-resistant armor is classified by the National Institute of Justice is actually pretty complicated. It appears from the onset that there's three levels. There's level one, two, and three of stab resistance, but there's really six different levels of stab resistance that they have. The first subcategory is edged and spike-resistant threats. So when you see something, you see a vest, that says it's edge one, edge two, or edge three, they're talking about knives. Um, and when they're talking about spike one, spike two, or spike three, they're talking about ice picks or improvised weapons. Now in the edge category, there's two different test knives, and I'll show the schematics here as I'm talking about them. The first is a small tanto kind of looking blade, kind of like this one that they use as a test blade. And the other one is a long, thin, double-edged knife, like a long kitchen knife or a Fairroom Sykes fighting knife. On the spike category, they basically use a commercial ice pick. And I'll show that diagram as well right here. Now what they do is they take each of these threats and stab them both perpendicular and at a 45 degree angle at a certain energy level. And in order to be edge rated, they have both knives have to get stabbed at that energy level and not go more than a quarter inch through the vest. So vests aren't really meant to be stab proof, they're meant to be stab resistant. And the same thing goes for the spike. They give them about a quarter inch going through the vest and still keep, and to still have the rating. Then they take them and stab them at the energy level plus 50% that they're rated for to see if it's just going to slide all the way through or if it's going to stop in a reasonable distance. And the reasonable distance they figure is 0.79 inches, or a little over three quarters of an inch of penetration. And they call that energy level two. Same thing for spike testing. The way they work out what the initial energy level is, is is a representative sample of the male population. And I think the, the sample was originally taken in the UK uh, many, many decades ago. They take the average male population and how much force they can impart onto a knife in a standing motion, and they take the 85th percentile, 90th percentile, and 96th percentile. And that's your level 1, level 2, level 3. Level 1 is 85th percentile, level 2 is 90th percentile, level 3 is 96th percentile. So what this means for you when you buy a level 1 spike rated stab vest is that if you were to fill a room with 100 inmates and hand each of them a ice pick and have them stab you as hard as they possibly could while wearing that level 1 spike rated vest, 80 of them wouldn't be able to get it more than a quarter inch through the vest into your pink flesh. And if it was a level 1 edge rated knife, the same 80 guys wouldn't be able to get the knife more than a quarter inch through the vest. The testing procedure also includes a 45 degree angle stab where it's still, it also can't get more than a quarter inch in based upon the level that it's being rated at. 
and it includes an overload test, which is to show that the blade can't go all the way through and just break loose at a certain point and slide through. It keeps manufacturers honest. So at the level one, they would stab the vest at whatever the energy level is and then go back and stab it again at the energy level that they're testing for plus 50%. And at plus 50%, the blade can only go about a little over three quarters of an inch through the vest and still keep the rating. So you don't have a situation where somebody makes a level one rated spike vest and some really big burly dude stabs you with the ice pick as hard as he can and the ice pick just slides all the way through. The vest is gonna continue providing resistance to the weapon it doesn't just get a quarter inch in and slide all the way through and get into your spleen. Cut resistant vests aren't generally tested against slash resistance because even ballistic vests that are designed for firearm protection are pretty slash resistant. If you think about the Kevlar gloves that we wear for work, they're very slash resistant and yet they're very thin and they're made of a lot of the same materials, uh, Kevlar, Spectra, Dyneema, things like that that are generally you find used in bulletproof vests. So any of those, any bulletproof vest should be pretty slash resistant, so the NIJ doesn't even bother testing against those. There are dual use uh, spike and edge vests. You see that a lot in a correctional environment with tactical teams. They'll have level three spike, level three edge vests. Most vests that you see inside the United States are just spike rated, and most vests that you see in the UK are dual rated or are just blade rated. In the UK, a vest has to be tested against blades before they can even try to spike rate it. In the United States, most of our stab vests are worn by correctional officers, and this is their primary threat. There are available on the market and are used primarily by sheriff's departments that have combination personnel who are working corrections inside a facility, and they're working what's called externals, which is being an armed police officer out on the street or guarding prisoners as they're working on a work release program or on a chain gang type program outside of the facility where there might be ballistic threats. There's dual vests that are both ballistic rated and spike or edged weapon rated. And what you see most of the time is a level 3A or a level 2 ballistic rating and a level 1 or a level 2 spike rating on those types of vests. Of course, stab vests in the UK are a big thing. Police officers who are working outside, in fact, armed police officers as well, are wearing stab vests because knives are their primary personal weapon concern, where in the United States, guns are our primary personal weapon concern. So that's armor protection levels for stab vests, something that I don't see of a lot on the internet. In fact, I had to go to source material to find a lot of the technical information about this and how these vests are tested. It was actually pretty interesting. So if you have anything to add to the conversation, add it below in comments. Uh, if you're a correctional officer and you have direct knowledge of these things being used and stabbed and how well they work and how much force those jewel ratings on the scale mean, put it down in the comments below. I'll be interested to hear about it. You guys uh, have fun out there and be safe. Well, now if you like that video, go ahead and subscribe because there's a whole lot more to come. As soon as I... Uh, Finish up these calls, go 10-8. County 291. County 291.